Uh, good evening, students. Another day, in another class of business data analytics. And uh, before we start, let me do my opening remarks. And I'd like to say that uh, uh, under our business data analytics online classes, we have online classes plus we have recorded class videos. We have the theoretical notes plus the revision material. Uh, my contact has been given there down below, my number and my email address. And uh, for those on YouTube, I'd like to, to ask you to subscribe, like, share, and click on the notification bell. Also, I'd like to clarify on this that uh, all our classes are, are recorded. All our classes are recorded. So on YouTube, we have private videos and uh, public videos. So these private videos are for people who have paid. So you are allowed to see the private video. So if you want to repeat the whole class, you liars with me. My email address and my number is here. And uh, we shall see how it goes. So under uh, forecasting of financial statements, I've brought down a brief summary, a brief introduction to financial forecasting. And uh, financial forecasting is predicting a company's financial future by examining historical performance of data. This involves guesswork and assumptions. Many unforeseen factors can influence business performance. A common type of financial forecasting is the use of pro forma statements. And a pro forma can mean a projection or a forecast. There are mainly two commonly used methods. That's the quantitative forecasting method and qualitative forecasting method. And uh, under quantitative forecasting method, Nicholas has joined in. Under a quantitative forecasting method, this is based on historical data, based on historical data. So under quantitative, we have the percentage of sales method. This one is the common one, where everything you do as a percentage of sales. We also have the straight line. This assumes that the historical growth rate remains constant. And we also have the moving average. This one takes the average of the previous period growth rate. And uh, we have the regression analysis. This regression analysis will mainly look under it when we are doing management accounting. So we have the simple linear regression and the multiple linear regression. This one will cover it fully under management accounting. But this, these three here, we will cover them today. Also, we have the qualitative. And qualitative relies on expert knowledge and experience to predict performance, the final, to predict future performance of the company. So under qualitative, we have the Delphi method. This involves consulting a, an expert to analyze the market condition. And we also have the market research where you research on factors such as competition, inflation, consumer pattern, consumer behavior. So that is the, you do a market research and now you see how your forecast can be. That, that was a brief introduction to financial forecasting. We'll go straight forward into the equations. Into the equations. I'll send this over after the class. I'll send this file over. So we'll go to forecast one. This one was in the pilot paper, December 2022. It's a very simple one. So we shall begin. You are provided with the following extracts of financial statement of profit and loss and statement of financial position of Darubini Limited. For the year ended 30, June 2020, 21, and 22, there you have been given the statement of profit and loss. Then you have been asked the, the cumulative average revenue growth rate for the year 2022. So under um, cumulative average growth rate, uh, let me take time and explain there a little bit, even though it's just two marks. We have the card. Control. Control bolt. So this one is equals to the ending balance. The ending balance divided by beginning balance. Then you power that. Power one over time over t. Then you do minus one. So that's the formula we'll be using. That's the formula we'll be using. Uh, and um, we have, uh, let me say we have like, 
the CAG and we have the average growth rate. So these are different. The CAG measures the investment annual growth rate over time. The CAG assumes that the compounding is done every year. And so, and if you want to explain the cumulative average, the cumulative growth term is used to, to describe a percentage of increase over a set period of time. So the difference is that the CAG assumes that, uh, assumes that the growth rate is compounded annually, but the other one is not annually. So investors prefer the CAG because it, it smooths out the volatility, volatile nature of year to year growth rate. For example, let's say a successful company has been performing well, but under a certain year, it performs badly. So if you come to individual growth rates, the year that performed badly will adversely affect the growth rate. But when you use CAG, the impact will be relatively low as compared to when you use the individual growth rates per year. So uh, question one, we will answer it. It's a very simple one. So it will be equals. We have been told the two-year average. So it's 2022 and 2021. So the ending balance is here, the sales, the sales, 81. You start with, you open your bracket. So you take 81, divide by the 64,800, shift you close the bracket, you shift your power, you open the bracket one, divide by one. Because the time range here is just one, shift you close the bracket, minus one, you do control enter, you see it's 25 percent okay and uh, you can also do the the other one the average one it's always like this so it will be equals the shift you open bracket the 64 800 minus 54 you shift close bracket divide by the 54 control enter you change it into percentage and you add to the small places and you do also for 2022, you just drag alone. Then you'll come to Zico's average, you down, you press tab, you take these two, you control enter. So you see the, the average is 22.5, but the cumulative average revenue growth rate is 25%. And I will go to the second part. Using a two-year cumulative average growth rate, calculated in B above. Prepare a one-year forecast statement of profit and loss for the year ended 30 June 2023. Assume that vertical ratios for the year 30 June 2022 apply for the 2023 forecast, except for depreciation and finance costs. As we have talked earlier about analysis of financial statement, we talked about vertical analysis. Vertical analysis also known as common size. It's vertically this way. So I'll uh, so we will start by answering this question. So we we'll, uh, control bolt. We do a vertical analysis. Vertical analysis. Twenty twenty two. Control enter control bolt. I do alt HMC to margin center. So we'll come to our to our. Statement of profit and loss. We take this sales and net profit. Control C. We come, we come, we do. Control V. So we will start from the cost of sales. Cost of sales because we have told the revenue will grow as the cumulative average. So this one will be growing at 25 percent, 25 shift percent. And uh, so our uh, cost of sale, vertical analysis, everything is over sales. So we'll come here. We take our cost of sales, divide by our our sales, and uh, we want to lock this our sales. So we press F4. We do Control Enter. Then we drag down. We drag down. Okay, we come here. To our gross profit, this one will be it will be our multiplications. Even this one will be just summations. We remove them. We backspace to remove. 
depreciation we have been told it will remain constant we remove it also finance cost here we've been told depreciation and finance cost will remain constant also finance cost we remove them and uh, also our income tax expense even our profit before tax because this is just summation our income tax expense will be 30 percent now we are using negative negative 30 percent and our net profit and we'll find it. So this is the vertical analysis of uh, 2022. So we say that uh, we can call this our, a pro forma, a pro forma or a focus. So it will be pro forma, pro forma, statement of profit and loss for the year 2023. 2023 control enter we will take our sales we we'll take our sales we will take our our income statement we don't have to repeat the whole thing we do control v do control v so we've been told our sales our sales will increase by 25 percent the cag we get here so it will be equals the sales of uh, 2022 the sales of 2022 here this one times times shift you open bracket one shift plus the 25 25 we had taken it down here it is here we close our brackets we do control enter so that will be our sales for the year 2023 our forecast sales our cost of sales will be 40 percent because you are using the vertical analysis of 2022 so it will be this 40 percent times the our sales times our sales and uh, we want to lock this our sales so that it doesn't move down so we press f4 we do control enter we do control c to copy we come to operating expenses we do control v it has copied with the formula there is nothing else you are copying so our gross profit we press alt equals control enter alt hbp for top border also our operating profit alt equals we adjust here a little bit the two control enter control bolt alt hbp for our top border we have been told that our depreciation will remain constant so equals we go to the equation we go to the equation you see our depreciation was 750 control enter control backspace to jump to the active sales we do control c because also our finance cost will remain constant control v our finance cost there so our profit before tax we do alt equals we adjust here control enter also our profit before tax alt equals we adjust so our tax expense it will be equals the 30 times the profit before tax so our net profit we do alt equals we adjust control enter we do alt hbu and uh, that's our pro forma statement of profit and loss for the year 2023 that one is a focus this one was a very simple one it was in the pilot paper it was in the pilot paper this one takes a little time so we'll go to the second one this second one control home to jump to cell number one a1 so this one was in the december 2022 examination you can talk to me to the chat if i'm audible if i if i'm audible so it was in the december 2022 examination you've been provided with the following extract statement of profit and loss for sepetuka limited there is the statement of profit and loss for the year 2019 to 2022. You've been required to calculate and interpret the following. The annual revenue growth rate for the years 2020 to 2022. You come, you click this cell and you press shift and space. You select, you press control shift plus, you add another, another one. So it's uh, from uh, 2022, you do control bolt. 2020 tab control bolt 2021 tab control bolt 2022 isn't it you do this 
you do alt hbh for a thick bottom border and this is the annual revenue growth annual let's say growth okay for we press tab for 2020 to be equals you come to 2020 you open brackets you come to the sales in 2020 this one minus uh, the sales in 2019 this one you close up your brackets divide by the sales in 2019 you do control enter control backspace to jump to the active cell you change it to percentage and you add to the small places isn't it and they will drag along So that's the annual growth rate. Annual growth rate. The one who has logged in now, we have started our class. We have already done the part one. So we are uh, on part two. We are on part two. Okay. And I will send this one over after the class. So you have been asked the three year cumulative CAG for the year 2022. So it will be the CAG. So we write control bolt, shift CAG tab equals so as we have said earlier our CAG is equals to you first open your bracket so our ending revenue was 95,580 divided by the one in 2020 remember you're in 2020 over 64,800 you close our bracket you power so it will be one no you open your bracket first one divide by two because there are three years so it will be like one two isn't it you close your bracket minus one control enter control backspace to jump to the active cells and uh, you change it into percentage and you put it in two decimal places and uh, if you just want to confirm the average annual growth rate average annual growth rate is equals you type average come down press tab and uh, the average is this one control enter you see the difference of 45 and we have talked about this one and we have said why we prefer this CAG instead of this one. So we'll go to part B of the question. And uh, part B of the question is the main question. And it reads this way. Now assume the following for Sepetuka Limited. Revenue growth rates are focused under three scenarios, yes. namely base, optimistic, Hello. and pessimistic case. The best, the best rate, the best will be... The best growth rate for the first year of the forecast is the 2022 CAG, and this is expected to reduce by 2% annually until the last year of the forecast, subject to a minimum of 15%. I like us to do this uh, this as we go by so that we don't waste time. So I'll uh, create something small here. I'll do like, uh, let's say if our, our forecast mainly, you can see it's from 2020 to 2022. So I start from here. This is 2020. Control bolt, control enter, control bolt. And this one is 2021, control enter, control bolt. And this one is 2022, control enter, control bolt. This one are the actuals, actuals. Actuals, control enter. I'll do, I'll do merge, I'll do merge, merge and center. And I uh, will have also the, from now, we have been asked to prepare our forecast from 2023. So we'll have a 2023 tab, 2024 tab, and uh, I come, I select these two. I do this way up to 2027, and I do alt HBH. Also here, I do alt HBH, and I will start now our analysis. We've been told. We've been told the revenue growth rate are under three scenarios, the base case, optimistic and pessimistic. The base case, so we are writing our assumption. I like to take this one. You come, you select here, you do shift plus, shift space, and you do shift control plus, you add another one. Shift control plus, you add a second one. And uh, we come here, we do control X, we do control V. And uh, here is the assumptions, assumptions, our assumptions. Control enter. We do alt HMC to merge and center and we do control bolt. 
that is control B to bolden. And uh, we have the our revenue. So our revenue, start with our revenue. Our revenue. We've been told that uh, here, yeah, the base case growth for the first year of the forecast, the first year of the forecast is 2023, will be the 2022 CAG. So equals, our CAG was 21.45. Here it is equals to this one. Control enter, control backspace to jump to the active test. And uh, you've been told, uh, been told here. Yeah, this one is expected to reduce by two percent annually until the last year of the forecast. So it will be for 24-24 to be equals to 2023 minus two shift percent. Control enter, and I uh, you reduce the decimal places to two decimal places. So for 2024, it will be 19. It has reduced by 2%. And uh, we go to 2025, it is 17. And uh, 2026, it is 15.45. Uh, and uh, 2027, it's 13. And we have been told subjects to a minimum of 15%. So we change the 2027 to 15%. And uh, we go to the next one. The op optimistic case is 20% above. That one we write here, we write here, optimistic and uh, pessimistic. So we've been told op optimistic will be 20%, so that one will be 1.2, and uh, the pessimistic is 10% below, so that one will be 0. 0.9. Then we continue, we continue, we continue to number two. We've been told our gross profit margin for the first year is expected to be the three-year average for the period of 2020 to the year 2022. So we'll come here, our GP margin, GP margin, GP margin. So our GP margin, we've been told, is the average from 2020 to 2021. So equals, equals, we come to our income statement. Now we take our gross profit. For, from 2020, remember, we are not taking 2019. So it is 32,400 divided by uh, 64,800. Control enter, control backspace to jump to the active state. You change it in percentage and you add two decimal places and uh, you drag along up to 2022. So we've been told that uh, it will be the average, to be the average, to be the average. Yeah, the gross profit. The gross profit for the first year of the forecast will be the average. So, and I will come here equals <coughs> average. Average is down. You see, you have average deviation, and we have average. So, you press the down arrow key and you press tab and you take all this and you do control enter. And uh, this is expected to reduce by 2% until the last year of the forecast subject to a minimum of 50%. So we copy what has been up here. You can just come along and we drag it down to copy. You see from 56 to 54, that is 2. That is 2%. And uh, we drag up to there. And uh, we have been told uh, if you drag this along, you will see that it's uh, below 50, it's 48 and we've been told subjects to a minimum of 50, so we'll change that one to 50%, control enter. And uh, we go to our operating expenses, part three. Operating expenses ratio are modeled uh, at three year average from the period of 2020. They are assumed to remain constant over the period. And uh, something you mark here is the ratios. So the ratios will be over sales. So our operating expenses tab, so uh, equals, we come to our we come to our to our income statement operating expenses you see our operating expenses for 2020 was negative this one so we take this one divide by the sales divide by the sales control enter now th that's why it's called the sales percentage method and uh, you put two decimal places and you drag along so We've been told that uh, it will be the average, it will be average is equals to average, down arrow, 
tab and I take all of this, control enter. So we've been told that um, operating expenses, these are assumed to remain constant over the forecast period. So we come to 2024 is equal to this one. And uh, we control enter and we drag all along. Because even it's constant, we can't drag even the whole because we just use it as a, as a constant. You can just also leave it that way or you can drag along. And we go to depreciation. Depreciation to revenue is assumed to remain constant at the three-year average from 2022. So depreciation, depreciation equals, we come to our, we come to our, Oh, I had forgotten the effective tax rate, but we are going back. We come to our now our income statement is 800 divided by the 64,800. Control enter, control backspace, jump to the active cell percentage, and uh, you do two decimal places and you drag along. So we've been told it's the average, the average here, depreciation. Is the three average from the period and it's assumed to remain constant. So equals average, we press down arrow, press tab, and I take out this our figures here, control enter. So that is the average depreciation and it will be constant throughout the forecast. And uh, we go to finance cost, finance cost, finance cost, FC, finance cost. So finance cost, the finance costs are expected to reduce steadily as the loans are repaid. Use the reduction rate in the year 2022 over the forecast. So we come to the reduction rate from the year 2022. First, we start with the equal sign, equal sign. Yeah, it will be equal sign and uh, we come. You come to our finance cost. So from 2021 to 2022, it's from 9,000 9, to 8,000. Control enter, control backspace, jump to the active sale. So it will be the finance cost will be being paid as at 1,000, 1,000, at 1,000. And uh, so we, we come to the our. Additional information number six, the income tax expense is calculated as the historical tax effective tax rate. So we skipped here, we skipped here, part three here, part three. And uh, so the effective from 2020, you select, you do shift space to select the row and you do control shift plus to add a row. You come, you copy this one, control C, control V. And uh, this is the tax rate, this is the tax rate, tax rate. So our tax rate will be equals, and um, so we go to our tax, we go to our tax from 2020, it's this one, divide by, remember tax is not over sales, tax is over um, profit before tax, isn't it? We take that one, control enter, control backspace, jump to the active set, we change in percentage and uh, you do two decimal places and drag along. So you will see like our effective tax rate is 30, so we come to our, our assumptions here, tax rate. Tax rate is 30%, 30, shift percent, control enter. So like um, now it's time we prepare a five-year forecast, five-year forecast. You can, you can just write as the question is a uh, five-year forecast. The term forecast and uh, pro forma are used interchangeably. Statement of profit and loss for the year. So the years will be this one. You do, you copy, you do control C, you come, you do control V. These are the years. So we'll take just our, our income statement. We'll take our income statement. We'll take our income statement here above from sales, from sales. You do control C. You come to the answer. Come to the answer. Control V. Sorry, sorry. There are cells that are merged. There are cells that are merged. So I'll merge and 
and merge them and now i do i select i do control v no the part has been has been removed we have just like two minutes or so let's just uh, let's just take the statement down control c and i will log out and log in again so we come here the meeting started earlier a bit started like six minutes earlier we do control v so our income statement is down here it's already down here so it's time we prepare the income statement. Let's just uh, do this. I can do this and do, no. I can do this and do Alt HDR for a right border. Alt HDR for a right border. Okay, now let's log in. Let's log out and then we log in. I will be ending the meeting and we'll just continue from here. we we'll just continue from here. I'll take this one, Control Bolt. Take this one, Control Bolt. And I do merge and center, I do merge and center, so that uh, we are just ready to start. So let's uh, let's log in and log out. And for those on YouTube, please subscribe, subscribe to the to the channel. And uh, thank you so much. So let's log in and log out again. Log in, log out, and log in again. 